All right, and it's Friday, the 28th of October, 2022. Welcome to Good Afternoon, Ghana. So we're yet to have another interview, a very interesting one, and we'll see how that will play out, play out uh, when we start talking uh, pretty soon with our guest that is on the show this afternoon. Uh, there's been a lot going on with the NDC, um, their opinions on the economy, persons that have lost, persons that have won, especially in the constituencies, uh, the election that was held recently. And uh, we've been talking to some of them too who want to hold national office. And one of them is coming on the show this afternoon. And he is a legal practitioner, Ni Ama Ashite. I'll introduce him later on after this break. So let's just take a breather. When we come back, uh, we'll introduce him to you and then we'll get a discussion going. All right, welcome back. So it's an exciting afternoon because we're going to have an interview with one of the very interesting politicians we have in this country in the person of Niyama Ashite. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us Thank here. Thank you, my sister. On Good Afternoon, Ghana. Good, good afternoon, good How afternoon. How have you been? Well, I'm good. You're good. Very good. Have you been active? you know, in politics or you've just been home watching how things are going? No, 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 I've been very active. I mean, you know, once a politician, always a politician. Yes. And uh, uh, there are two, several ways of killing a cat, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I've been there. I, I currently am the vice chairman for the uh, NDC, in the uh, Council of Elders in the Greater Accra region. I, I, I served on the campaign team uh, in the Greater Accra region, and I served in the Operation Directorate, mm -hmm. you know, of the 2020 campaign. You know, and I've done, I've done, I've been, I've been, I've been with the party, and I'll forever remain with the party. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's see. Um, you know, let me give you just a brief about the gentleman in front of me so that um, just in case you don't know him, maybe you're a 90s born or something, so Man. you might not know him. <laughs> we'll give you a brief about him, what he has done in politics briefly. Okay, so my, uh, right, so I have the profile ready. I'm sure uh, you have it on the screen, but it says notable achievements, including the following that um, Laura Niyamashite, who is in front of me now, it says the brain, he is the brain behind the establishment of the Ghana Maritime Administration. When I was the General uh, Secretary of the Ghana Merchant Navy Officers Association, and then fine attached the document that uh, started it all. And then two, he says that, pioneered, okay, so he gave us a document, pioneered the establishment of agencies for the recruitment of Ghanaian seafarers on foreign flagships. And then uh, currently, I have over 1,000 Ghanaian seafarers working on foreign shipping companies, notab notably Ethiopian shipping lines of Ethiopia, Islamic Republic of Iran shipping lines of Iran, and the Danos shipping lines of Greece and others. Three, a member on the committee of experts established under the auspices of the UNDP, Ministry of Manpower, Youth and Development, Youth and Employment, and Ministry of Railways and Harbour. Now, the committee has also drafted a policy document that will promote youth employment in the maritime industry. So it says that as a former chief executive of the Tema Municipal Assembly, I served eight years with my team of competent local government officials and workers and achieved a high degree of excellence for the Tema Municipal area. Landmark projects which I, I or were initiated, planned and or executed were as follows. One, or A, Tema Greenwich Link, B, the city at the center of the world project under this project uh, tema was linked to the uh, borough of Greenreach and to date several schools in tema are benefiting from the link. Goes on to say the tema industrial trade uh, center, that's Texpo, established, I have Texpo in my area, Texpo market. <laughs> 
Yeah, so I uh, established uh, as the one-stop destination for industry and commerce in a Tema municipal area. Unfortunately, the project was abandoned by the MPP government. So initiate, initiator and brain behind the Tema Ashaman Interchange. Oh, nice. Now promoted a high standard of discipline, which uh, is a sign, uh, okay, sine qua non for development of the Tema municipal area. Occupations 1975 to 2008, National Service Opportunities Industrialization Center, IOIC, uh, that's also as councillor from 1975 to 1976. Unionist and General Secretary, Ghana Merchant Navy Officers Association from 1976 to 1992, President, West African Transport Workers Federation, 1988. 1992 and uh, President Forest Bureau Association of Ghana, uh, President Ship Manning Association of Ghana, okay, 2005 and 2008 to 2008, a maritime labor consultant uh, as well. Do I have more? Wow. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> Municipal Chief Executive Tema Assembly 1993 to 2001, Chairman Silent Cafe Branch OSU RE 2005 2008, Chairman Clote Kole. Constituency of NDC 2005 to 2008, and Member of Parliament, um, Clole, uh, Clote, Clole. this constituency is very confusing. Ah, 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 <laughs> Clote Clole Constituency 2009, uh, I think it was up to 2017. Right, so from 2009 to 2017. That is correct. Right. And then the Minister for Greater Accra Region as well from 2009 to 2012, Minister for Employment and Labor Relations 2013 to 2014, Vice Chairman Greater Accra Council of Elders, Member uh, Greater Accra Campaign Team, and Member Security and Intelligence Committee of Greater Accra Region. All right. It's a long one, and there's so much. My producer mm -hmm. sent me so many um, <laughs> you know, details of what happened in mm -hmm. the life of me, Ama Ashite. Welcome once again. Thank you so Thank much you, for your time. Dear. That's Thank a you, long profile yeah. for the young ones to learn yeah. from. Yeah, yeah. Right, let, let me start from this point. Uh, Greater Accra Security, um, what exactly were you doing? What was your job? Well, before I deal with the question, let me just uh, say good afternoon to all your viewers and uh, I'm happy to be here this afternoon We're to, happy to, to have, have you. a chat <laughs> uh, about Niamashite. Um, yes, security is uh, an important uh, aspect of life. And uh, if you take your security for granted, you, you always live to regret. And uh, particularly when it comes to elections, obviously, uh, one thing that you know you need to pay attention is your security. Security in respect of people, security in respect of property, and 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 if you get it right, then you are good to go. So, uh, first of all, uh, there are there are people who always plan to do evil. I mean, you know, particularly when so many people are involved, you don't know who is who. And therefore, it is important to make sure that uh, nobody, you know, will do anything that will hurt others. Do, do, was it a party assignment, uh, government assignment, and NGOs? No, no, what was that no party was assignment. I mean, was a party assignment? Yeah, basically party. I mean, you know, to ensure that uh, all our people are safe. Okay, yeah. so it was to ensure that people are safe. Yeah. Uh, is, is that project, was it a policy that was an ongoing concern? Or no, just, I mean just, ongoing just concern? for the elections. It, it was, was just for the elections. elections. It was just for the elections. Just for the elections. Okay, I'm just asking because of the developments uh, within the greater Accra region, especially when it comes to human security, if there was any sustainable uh, plan, you know, put together that will continuously protect humans uh, from yeah. natural disasters and a few things like that that bothers me. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's traditional security and human security. I mean, to make sure that uh, uh, everybody uh, does his job freely and fairly, you know, without any let of hindrance. Okay. 
Uh, the situation is such that when it becomes necessary, we may either have to call in the police, that there's something, uh, uh, you know, that had to be looked at. So we call in the police, uh, and, and that's it, for the purpose of elections. On hindsight, I know, I mean, Niyama Shite is um, a name that resonates very well, especially within the greater Accra region. I'm wondering on hindsight what you have done, uh, how you've worked with people politically, uh, professionally. If you compare it to what's happening today, what do you think, do you think Accra is developing or Accra is moving backwards? Well, let me just say that I have been around for a long time. In fact, I'm a royal from Teshi. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, interestingly, on the 26th of uh, January, you know, 2006, I was seized by, by my people, by my people of Teshi. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Tema, I was seized, you know, by, by my people from Teshi and taken, taken, taken to Teshi. And I was going to be confined as a chief. As a chief? Yeah, of Teshi in 2006. And what happened? Oh, well, I managed to talk my way out of it. Uh, I was not ready. Why were you not I, ready? I, I was not ready because I think that we, we, I have brothers and cousins who are equally competent. And I thought that they should be given that opportunity so I can support them. But chieftaincy, I mean, if you look at the chieftaincy, uh, the way people are in students, families, it really is not about who is capable, it's about who is next. No, 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 no. Yes, uh, it's true to some extent, yes. But, I mean, you see, I have played an important role mm -hmm. in the family. Mm -hmm. and, and you see, is it, normally they say that it's the, the chief is not actually the chief. Is the good people around him okay. who made the chief. So if you don't have the good people around you, I'm sorry. You run into a ditch. So I thought that for the role I was, I've been playing for the stool, I should be allowed you know, to continue to play that, that role, role instead of instead becoming of being a, a chief. And, and then, and then I, I, I still play that role. I managed to talk my way out of it. And the elders understood it. But you prefer being actively a politician? Well, I, I said a politician is always a politician. And, uh, you know, I have a passion for it. You know, I have a serious passion for politics. So what gives you the passion to be a partisan politician? I mean, everybody's a politician anyway. Don't get us wrong. But to be a partisan politician, what gives you that passion? You see, politics is service to the people. Yes, it's Is service. It? Isn't it service to yourselves? No, it cannot be. You, when people elect you into, uh, into office, mm -hmm. it is not for yourself. It is for you to serve the interests of the people and make their life better. Better their condition of service and help in their development. It's, I mean, unfortunately, we have a situation today that uh, people enter into politics for their parochial interests. And uh, that is why we are suffering today. Uh, there's no patriotism anymore. There's no patriotism. How do you feel as a veteran politician sitting here and telling us that there's no patriotism anymore? Don't you think that you have failed? Well, I cannot say I have failed. Because we are different people. My name is uh, Nyama Shite. Somebody's name is something else. I have a different background. I come from a different family. But I'm saying that patriotism is lost because money has taken over everything. Everything in our country today. Go with the days when you are a politician and you visit towns and villages, you go back with some cassava, with some fowls, and with some goats. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, people will just give you gifts. So we'll There's say nothing it, like that again. It's the other way around now. There's nothing you like that. You have to take the cassava and the plantain to them. Is that more? Oh, wow. You know, these days, 
Because everybody see the politician as, you know, uh, somebody who is eating deep in, on, on the, in, the, in the plate of the people. Why do you think we see that? Well, because some people come to power in no time they are filthy rich. <laughs> filthy rich. And some of us, we served. I served. I, 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 I worked with the PNDC when I was the uh, general secretary for the Ghana Merchant Navy of Censors Association. I worked with the PNDC closely. And, uh, and it was more sacrificial. I mean, you are proud that you are working for Ghana. You okay. have a reputation. And those days, when you say, when I'm going to I feel good. I feel very, very good. I, I, I yeah. had an opportunity to call a politician by the title Honorable, and he was upset. He said, it sounds too corrupt, and he doesn't like it. Well, I agree. Yeah. I, 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 I hardly use the honorable. So you don't because in any case, everybody is calling himself honorable. No, I, 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 I see politicians, you know, uh, party executives. Everybody calls himself honorable. So what is it? I mean, I mean it's lost the meaning. The honorable goes with certain virtues and values, which, which is no more. You understand? Having worked with... So for me, we've lost direction. We've lost direction. I mean, money, money, money. Those days, it wasn't like that. And I, I've said in, in, in some of these engagements, something that happened when I was the mayor of Tema. When we have closed down the Tema Municipal Assembly for three days in order to do an outreach program, to go into the community and to engage the people and to explain government policies, for them to also ask us questions. And uh, some officials had come from the national and regional party office in Accra to join the team, the outreach team. The night before the, the outreach started, the late president Rollins called me. He said, Numwe, I mean, normally we speak Ghan. Numwe, I mean, no, I care, I go for the outreach, I mean, I go for outreach. Mm -hmm. People are come from Accra to join your team, their outreach team, you know, to go out and engage the public and you put them in the hotel. Mm -hmm. he will not, he, you know, the, the, the president will not allow me to even respond. He said, get them out. Get them out. From the hotel. Get them out from the hotel. Who is paying for it? Don't you think it would have been better for you, that money that you are using to pay the hotel? As you go on the outreach and you meet a lady, uh, an old lady or somebody who needs some small coins to start some business, that you can give that money to that instead of putting our people in the hotel and paying for it. Couldn't they have traveled from Accra to Tema and do the outreach and come and back? And return. Return. Because after all, people live in Accra and work in Tema and they commute yeah. every day. You understand? So you see the philosophy at the time. The people. Looking back within the PNDC administration, there were some very good values that today we could have, we could have adopted and, and still applied and will work within the democratic system. How is it that, at what point did we veer off? Well, you know, it's... it's, it's because, it's, I mean, it, it, Rollins came in before he took action. It, it looked like he saw certain things and he wanted to make changes, yeah. even though some of his approach was ruthless. Uh, it still had a reason, or there was a good reason to achieve something. So how didn't we be able to adopt the values, the good values that we could adopt? You see, the good thing about the, 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 the revolution was probity and accountability. People sacrificed 
their lives. People died for the good of this country. Unfortunately, the situation is not the same again. In fact, we've gone back several years. And you know, the revolution came because of Kalabule. Right. You know, and when people were abusing their position to make money, is that right? And today, we are in worse situation. We never learned anything. No lessons were learned. No lessons were learned for me. And I'm happy I supported the PNDC. And we did so much work. Trust me, what you see of the maritime industry of this country, Myanmar played an important role, be it Ghana Ports and Airports Authority, be it the regional maritime university, which used to be the Nautica College, Nautica College right. be it Shippers Authority, which used to be uh, the Shippers Council, and be it the Ghana Maritime Authority, which used to be Shipping Commissioner's Office. I was going to bring you a document to tell you, to show you uh, the inception document that brought some reforms and the establishment of the Ghana Maritime Authority was under my signature. We did so much work. And the maritime industry, as you see today, I played an important role. And there's one person that we've all have forgotten, the late Ebuteria of blessed memory. May he so rest in peace. This gentleman worked so hard for this country. He was the PNDC member responsible for transport. And we did so much. We fought for the ratification of the Interliner Code of 404020, which has made Ghana Shippers Authority what it is today. That has made Ghana Mighty Authority what is it today. This man died. He had nothing. But he worked for Ghana. And these are things that should have been, a, been lessons for us. That there's only one country that we have. And that it is the responsibility of every Ghanaian to ensure that this country developed and to be a haven for all of us as a people. Unfortunately, that is not the case. L looking at your um, profile or your CV, you can tell that uh, we can spend almost two days talking about what you did <laughs> and what to the other. But the main reason why we're with you is because you, your name has come up as a, a party, an NDC party chairman hopeful. Yes. So um, with all that we've talked about in the past and how we've lost values, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. within the political um, uh, environment, why did you put yourself up to be a party chairman when today a lot of people are talking about the fact that, oh, the NDC and the MPP, they are all the same. They've led the party in many years and have done nothing but to just enrich themselves. Why do you want to come up again and not just rest in your glory? Well, I, I have been with the party from the beginning. From the beginning, right from the beginning. And I am a kidder. Yeah. I am a kidder. And I, I understand what it means to be a kidder. Country first. I, 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 I have served in various capacities within the rank and file of the party. I have been a branch chairman. Clotikoli, Silent Cafe branch in Clotikoli. I've been constituency chairman. Yes. I've been mayor. I've been a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. I've been a minister. I've been a cabinet minister. I've been a trade unionist. And I'm a lawyer. And 
What else? I, 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 I have the qualification. I have the competence and I have the experience. And uh, I think this is the time for me to bring all these things, you know, to share with others, in particular the NDC and this country. So what, what are, um, you know, the pillars on which you are coming with? Oh, I, 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 I'm sure you know that, oh, you know, the, 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 the party has a problem at leadership, at leadership, when it comes to national elections and organization and management. And I, I think I have what it takes to help to manage the party or national elections or management of the party and to lead a party as we go into election 2024. I'm saying that the party has a problem, and it's true. I mean, obviously, recently, I'm, I'm sure you heard what Asi Lukiti has said uh, when he was talking about Ampofu, that that tells you there was a problem. But these are two big men at the top of the right. party and uh, throwing mud at each other and so on. <laughs> Obviously, there's a problem. And I mean, somebody must come. To as a neutralizer. As a, to help solve the problem. And I think that I'm, I can do it better. So you want I, to come to help solve the problem yeah. by being the chairman of the party and not to sit the two of them down and speak with them? Oh. Eh, gamye I mean, if you ask somebody to do it, it's not like it's you. It's not like you doing it yourself. I mean, sitting there now and talking to them so that they continue, it's not the same as Niamh they coming to do it. Because look, I have what it takes. Since when did you start realizing NDC has a leadership problem? Oh, but even if for nothing at all, we went to 2016 right. elections. We came out, no coalition. 2020, we didn't learn any lessons. <laughs> no coalition. See, the irony of the, that situation, that you see, you have this hardworking branch executives. You have this hardworking constituency executives. You have this hardworking regional executives. They will go up and down the day of election, calling people from their homes, you know, to go and vote. Ghanaians will go and queue on the scorching sun to vote. And then at the end of the day, we come with excuses. We have been cheated. We have lost. We had lost. Ghanaians will not, Ghanaians will not be happy with NDC. Ghanaians will not tolerate this kind of excuses, excuses again. Because people vote. But because we cannot protect and secure the votes, we are unable to secure the sovereign will of these people who had voted. And that is why I'm coming to make sure that the votes, the ballots of our people, the sovereign will, our people will be secured. People, are, people, are, people want the NDC to come, to be honest with you. But we will sit down and we, our hands will be twisted in your back. We will win and then somebody grab the team from us. We can't we can take it anymore. You don't have any documentary proof that you, you actually Oh, won. but, you know, if you, if you let yourself go, it happens every day. I mean... And you are, when you are in your room, uh, your, 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 your room, you are sleeping, maybe you're going to, to take some, some small drink and you, you sleep and then you leave your door open. Somebody will enter and take, take, take your property and go away. Why not? 
<laughs> so you must be vigilant. What? Those days, Afarijan will tell you that elections are won at the polling station. Afarijan, the one thing that is always said, elections are won at the polling station. So be vigilant at the polling station. Today, it's not only at the polling station. You can be vigilant at the polling station. But you see, the process will come from the polling station to the constituency, to the region, and then to national. Yeah. And if you are not careful, by the time the results get to the top there, it has been changed. Everything has changed. And you are lost. You go to court, why not? I mean, there are, there are, there are grievance procedures that you need to follow. You go to court, and the court says you have lost. But you do nothing. Nothing. What's your opinion of your show in court during the election petition? Oh, well, <laughs> for me... I mean, the argument of uh, let uh, the, uh, electoral the chairman of the Electoral Commission be in the booth, and then the other argument also say well, that... But, 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 but the, the point is that the chairman of the EC should, be, should have gone to the booth and, and be cross-examined. Why not? She's serving the people of Ghana. And the people of Ghana want to know what happened. But you see, it's the law. So people find a way out of the law and, and get out of very difficult situations. So right. it cannot be solely, uh, uh, NDC cannot be solely be blamed for uh, what happened so much because, I mean, we've, we also saw the Electoral Commission changing figures almost about how many times? It shouldn't after be so. Final it it, it, it shouldn't so. be so. I mean, because it's a straightforward thing. I mean, you know, the, the, the determining results immediately after voting is not for nothing, it's for a purpose. So you need to be vigilant. You need to make sure that you have everything intact. You need to have very good pulling agents. I had, a, I had a situation. I was, you know, I contested election in 2004 in Krotikoli. In Krotikoli. For parliament. I lost narrowly. But I lost eight pink sheets at the time. It was a blue sheet or something. And that evening we were looking for the pulling agents. There are two classic cases. One, the person said he was asleep. They put my pulley agent on. He said he was asleep. He would not get up. When we wanted our pink sheet. The other one was in the salon down. We went to the house. They said the pulley agent who stood for me had traveled to his village in the water region. <laughs> yes. That's what happened. We lost. I lost eight pink sheets and we, I never retrieved them. And I lost that election by 1,800 votes. But how is it that you couldn't reconcile, reconcile with the Electoral Commission? Oh, by Electoral Commission. You see, wait, you see the, the, the Pinchy, they, they have no legs to run on. <laughs> you see, the, 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 the Pinchy have no legs to run. So if your Pinchy are missing, it's not for nothing. It's for a purpose. Somebody is going to use it to his benefits. And what happens normally is that people, they will change the results and get some of the, get some of the, the, the police agent to, to resign. That is the money thing I was talking about. So what I did, I stood in Asia again in 2008. What I did when I became the chairman of Clotty College Constituency mm -hmm. was to start to train police agents. And from 2006, to 2008, I was training pool agents. And I trained them. My target was to train the pool agents such that they even know more than the EC officials. So that you have the confidence to be able to challenge results. Mm -hmm. And trust me, we trained over 700 pool agents in two years. And day of election, by 9 o'clock, we had all our pink sheets. We did a collation in our office. We had won. By the time we're going to the, the, this. So, so, you see, these are things that you need to do. Such so that you are not going to... As, as a party. Yes, you are not going to court. If you are going to court, you have all your documents right. 
whether it's the uh, issue we have made mistakes or what not, you should make sure that you, you have. have your facts right. Simple. So, so, so for me, these are things that we need to do. But you see, the party, we have a problem. And the problem must be solved. Look, the pillars of the party, NDC, are the branches. The branches are the heartbeats of our party. Okay. The day the branches stop to work, all the, le the, the levels of the structure also stop to work. We are a center-left social democratic party. We believe in the grassroots. There is no reason why, or I do not, have, I do not know any reason why branch members, our branch members, we only vote at branch members in good standing anyway. We, know, we only vote for their branch executives and constituency executives, and they don't vote again. They don't vote again. It is no good. We need to strengthen our branches and empower them. And this is exactly what I will do to make sure that branch. The branch members in good standing will vote at branches for their branch executive, vote, vote at a, a, a constituency for constituency executive, so vote at region for regional executive, and vote national. at national. You don't allow them to vote at national, but when it's general election, you say you should go and vote. Oh, come on. And we have been, we have been government for, uh, since 92, and we are still at that level. No. No. And even when it comes to appointment, I think the branches must be given a role. When we win power, and the branches, and the, the president elect is going to make appointment, the branches must play a role. And I tell you, if I know that, oh, if party is in power, and I want it to be DC, it is my branch which will even say, we will support the nomination on Yamashite. That's the more I'll go and work at the branch. And I'll not go and work at the corridors of power to get positions. Yeah. And, mm. Never lose elections. So, so hold on there. Keda, we're having a discussion with Keda Niamashite, and uh, he, he's giving us, uh, you know, <laughs> reasons why he wants to lead the NDC as a chairman. He's a politician, an active one. You should know his name. It rhymes within the political, uh, you know, terrain, and also a lawyer as well. Let's take a breather. When we come back, we'll wrap up with him. I'll read your messages as well. So we'll be back shortly. This is Good Afternoon, Ghana. All right, well, uh, welcome back to Good Afternoon Ghana. Having an interesting time with lawyer Nia Mashite, a politician as well, a veteran one. Uh, this one says, Good afternoon, Annie. The man Nia Mashite is somebody who has been tested in leadership roles, so he is just fit to lead the NDC as a national chairman to win the 2024 general elections from Al Haji Haruna Ashaiman. I wish him all the best. Okay, thank you. So this one also says that from Kwesi Kisi from Gumwa Inkran, he says the speech by John Dramani Mahama on the economy alone has reduced 10% pressure, 20% hardship <laughs> from Ghanaians and 90% hope and relief to Ghanaians. This kind of leadership uh, to Ghanaians is the kind of leaders we need and support and not uh, super incompetent Nanadu, Vice President and his ministers. Thank you. Niyama um, Shite, we wish you all the best. My regard to Chairman. Okay. Metro TV, you are the best. I'm watching live from Saboba, Northern Region. Oh, hello to Northern <laughs> Region people. Kwesi, Kisi, uh, okay, I think, uh, okay, this one says, good afternoon, Annie. Uh, the best man to lead the party to win 2024 election is Chairman of Fusuampofo, really. So, of course, he is reliable, credible. Uh, However, uh, uh, we, um, a competition is not bad. Mm -hmm. So, let him come in. And let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Great. I agree with you. <laughs> All right. So this was as a dear aspirant, why do you want to contest the elections and you impose candidates on electorates from Techi Dari, Damungo, West Gunja Municipal? What does that mean? I don't know. 
Okay. So what brings to uh, what brings misunderstanding after ballot? Money to win is mm -hmm. by all means is a question. Techi Dari Damongo. Hey, people from mm -hmm. the north is saying mm -hmm. hello. So good afternoon, Annie. I'm really enjoying Honorable Nia Mashite's conversation. And uh, I must recommend him for his bold, bold discussion to lead the NDC party. He is very bold, decisive, and a unifier. His strategic plan and policy will win NDC power come 2024. And also, due to the ineptitude and intransigence of a Kufa du Baumia government, which has occasioned loss of confidence in the Ghanaian economy by the investor community, where many businesses are moving from Ghana to Ivory Coast. Companies in Ghana, I went ahead and my heart broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Companies in Ghana are shutting down due to high interest rates with skyrocketed inflation of goods and services. With frequent and devastating uh, downgrades by rating agencies. So with a person like Honorable Ashiti in affairs of the NDC, the national chairman, as a national chairman, we will definitely win election 2024. Mm -hmm. This is from Bis Bismarck Enchi, Tain president of KNU West. Can you ask Ford, really? <laughs> <laughs> University College. Okay. Good afternoon, Nani. My name is uh, Pius, the constituency secretary for Heman Lower Denchira constituency. Please, I want to ask Chairman Hofo in your studio about what he is going to get about, okay, maybe how he's going to get a youth uh, on board for election 2024 if he wins the election as an elected as a chairman. NDC needs people with vision and pragmatic strategy to deliver us from 2024 victory. Voting for Niyama Shite is voting for victory 2024. This is from Ayi Miyao, 2024 NDC. Ufui. Okay, Ayi Miyao. If you just say a Sokori constituency, mm. this one says Niyama Ashite is the best man to win mm. power 2024 election. Mm. Or for you, Boateng Kumewu. Oh, I'm getting message from all over the mm. place. Mm -hmm. Thank you for for that. So yeah, let's let's wrap up with. Yes, you know, and so you see, I, I, I there's no there's no much time. So yeah. I, no, this the issue of management is so critical. The management of a party is so critical. It seems to be very, 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 tough very issue very because critical. You, you're, you're disorganized. And and I remember what the late Vincent Assisi said. That's why NDC is an election machine. When elections are over, everybody goes to sleep. Oh, yes. you agree with that? Well, that has been the situation. But elections are won in four years. If we are managing our party, by now we should have we should have been holding together our traditional allies. We used to have, you know, strong allies, oh, NDC allies, affiliates. Even the TUC, because the TUC, because of its nature and character, you know, being an NDC being a, a center left social. Social, right. We used the, the GB, GPRTU, hmm? Queen Mothers. We've lost all those allies. We've lost them. we lost them. So when it comes to winning elections, it's very difficult. And these are things that have to be changed. Why do you think you lost them? You lost them to We don't manage them. How do you want to manage ah, but them? But if you sit down, if you have a friend, you don't visit your friend. And then when, he, when you are in need, then you go and knock at his door and they say, say, I want to come and greet you. Somebody had come earlier to greet him or, or her. <laughs> yeah. When it's election, then we'll, we'll go round. Hey, 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 hey. No, no, times have changed. Times have changed. When, look, look, those days, when, when TUC, you see, you know, their unions are doing their conferences, we, we, we support them. We go to their conferences. You listen. To listen and see what we can do to help. These days, we don't, when they are doing their conference, we don't even know. And what happens is that in the, in the year, there's somebody who is in charge of unions, you know, a desk officer. Get a calendar hmm, of the unions. So, oh, okay. You know, things have changed. We have cells at workplaces. Cells, cells at workplaces. It means you were in constant touch. Exactly. With the people. Exactly. The garages associated. There was one man, the late Von Williams. He went around the whole country to inaugurate garages association 
for NDC. The last one he did at Central Region, he was coming to Accra when he died. He had an accident and, and Winneba and died. We, have. we need to give our elders and founders a big role to play in NDC. No, you, you don't leave your party in the hands of elected officers only. Today we have left our party in the hands of elected officers only. Neck, in fact. Mm -hmm. When they take the gender, the end of it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the elders of our party must play a role. Rollins was playing that role, that when Neck takes a certain decision, they are not going to stop it. It's a consult. Yes. Today we don't have anything like that. There's need for a body of elders and founders. When Neck takes this, decision, it must be subject to the approval. Because they will be the custodian of our values, our ideologies, our principles, our ideals. To keep the NDC on track. We lost 2000, we lost 2016, we lost 2000. We are not even looked at our constitution. Because the, the constitution governs us. There are so many portals. So, <laughs> so um, I, I, I'm, I'm just hearing very party, interesting. I'm, I'm being party, carried away. A party, a party, we, we, every time we say we don't have money, we should go and make money. We must make money. We have members. And we get it right and give them pay dues, do fundraising, create a welfare thing for people. So this one says, good afternoon, Chairman. <laughs> Watching you live from Savalugu, Northern <laughs> Region. I wish you all the best. As you think, and Chairman of Pofo are dividing the front of the NDC. Therefore, the best candidate to be the unifier is Niyama Ashite, Kwame Kwating of Fenson North Constituency. <laughs> good afternoon, Abdul Latif from Yendi. Niyama Ashite is indeed the best man for the NDC. He is visionary. Uh, uh, okay, I uh, thank you. I can't read anymore. There's a lot coming in. But this is your camera. Um, you can look into oh, okay, it and okay. under one minute tell your those who are voting for you what do you call them uh your your delegates yes tell yeah, your yeah. delegates why okay, did you vote okay, you okay. as chairman you see and the mpp came out of uh, the break break the eight right break the eight mm -hmm. now the break the eight there's no stand on itself it comes with many things right and I know that the better aid are factored in Ufusuan Pofo and Zasiedu as chairman. Or that, oh. that if they are there, they will break the aid. And I am going to break, my own is B R A K E, break the aid that they want to break. Mine is break. Oh. Uh. As in car breaks? Yes. Okay. I will stop there. Are you stop it? There. And <laughs> it is important for us. And if, we, if I break that, if, they, if we are able to break that it, then MPP will know that we are battle ready. Oh. And that we are not going to take things for granted. I, you see, there are two big men who are fighting. Unfortunately. What are they fighting about? The 2020 elections, don't forget, we had a steering committee that supervised the campaign team under Joshua Lam. And the chairman of that, that steering committee was Ampafu. Right. The coordinator of all the activities of the campaign was Asi Nukitia. So if I say Nukitia, I say Ampafu is no good. Is Asi Nukitia the alternative to Ampafu? No. They are in the same boat. They are jointly and severally responsible to whatever has happened. Therefore, when we are going to vote, please let's remember that we have gotten to a point that you need somebody who will separate the two right. and unify them and so that we don't have a crack going into 2024. 20, and Niamh is the man. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's what time will allow me. Uh, Niamh Ashiti, there's so much to listen to from this man, but I think uh, I'm grateful for at least the one hour time spent with us. And he's running for uh, the chairman of the NDC. So we'll be dealing, dealing with them one after the other as they are all, uh, you know, wishing for the best for I'll the party. Again. Yes. And then